Glad you're here. I'm Dottie. I am a mom to two children. My oldest son, Dylan, is 33 years old. He has a diagnosis of autism, along with a heaping serving of pretty um, debilitating anxiety at times. And the type of autism that he has requires that he have a lot of support with him at almost all times. Now, you might have an adult son or daughter or someone you love very much with another type of developmental disability or maybe autism. And if you're like me, you've been struggling over the years with worry and concern and sadness and even grief over your adult child. So here's what I want you to know more than anything is you are not alone. You are not alone. I am right there with you. And as a coach to moms who have adult sons and daughters and people who have loved ones with autism, I hear this over and over again. Moms especially feel very alone in their thoughts, in their worry. They worry about what's gonna happen in the future for their adult son or daughter. Absolutely, I'm right there too. I still worry at times, but man, there was a time like eight years ago, I was spinning really out of control with worry, with sadness, with grief. It showed up as anger and irritability and despair. It was just not a good time. I knew I had to make a change. I had to do something different in my life because it just wasn't, it wasn't serving me, it wasn't serving Dylan, it wasn't serving the people in my life. So I have cultivated over these eight years lots of practices that have helped me. I also have a background in um, health coaching for women, in yoga and massage, so I've just pulled on all of these practices and really began practicing them. Like that's the difference is I can read about things, but what I started doing about eight years ago is just practicing them. I want you to know this, it has changed my life. It has changed my life and my perspective on my son. I also want you to know that I'm human. I still feel grief, I still feel sadness, I still worry, but not nearly like I used to. So I have one practice I wanna share with you today. Do not be fooled by the simplicity of the practice because it's this practice that really started me, kind of pulling me out of this feeling of you know, worry and anxiety. But here's the thing, you have to practice it, right? Because it's called a practice. And so here's what it looks like. A thought comes into your head. It might be, what will happen to my child when I can no longer care for them? That's the thought I hear the most from moms. That thought produces an emotion in our body. So first we have a thought. The thought produces an emotion. That emotion might be sadness or worry, grief, anger, or maybe a combination of all of those. When we feel those emotions, we typically resist them. We avoid them, we try to block them because nobody wants to feel negative emotions. I don't. But when we resist emotions, the thought and then an emotion comes up, when we resist those, we numb our feelings. And that's what numbing looks like. We get lost in maybe watching television, being on the internet, social media, shopping, eating, drinking, working, any of those things to like quote unquote numb ourselves from not having to feel the feelings in our body. Completely normal to distract ourselves. But none of those helps us process the emotion. Until we practice that emotion and really process it, it will keep coming back. Here's the practice. A thought comes in or an emotion surfaces, right? First a thought, then it produces an emotion. Just stop and name the emotion you're feeling. That's it to start with. So an emotion comes in. This morning, for instance, Dylan called me. He FaceTimes. He can't dial on a phone. He called me and I could tell he was really anxious. So what um, emotion surfaced for me was sadness and worry. When that comes up, and what I want to say first is when an emotion like that comes up, it lasts, research says this, it lasts only 90 seconds in our body. It's like a wave. It builds up, it crests, then it breaks. What happens is we keep thinking about the emotion. So it keeps going on and on and on, sometimes for hours or days, right? So when you think a thought, 
It produces the emotion. Don't try to eat or drink or shop it away, right? You're just gonna name the emotion. Oh, I'm feeling sadness. And just get a sense of what sadness feels like. Now, some people think this is a weird way to say it, but what does sadness feel like in your body? Do you feel it in your chest, in your throat, in your stomach? You're gonna feel it somewhere and you might not be able to recognize that right away. So you're just recognizing the feeling of sadness. Maybe you feel it in your body. Remember, it only lasts 90 seconds. Research says that tightness in your chest or throat, maybe your breathing is shallow, just let it pass. I know it's easier said than done, but remember this is a practice. You're gonna breathe into the emotion, just like this, like, oh, you know, hung up from Dylan. He was anxious. Nothing I can do about it right now. He's got someone with him. We talked. I recognized the emotion. I took just some deep breaths. I thought, oh, it shows up usually for me and my throat gets kind of constricted. So I felt it there and it passes. It, it crests, it feels really not good. And then it slowly goes away. That is the entire practice. So there was a time where I didn't want to do that practice. I wanted to live in my sadness and grief because that's all I knew. I can promise you because it's worked for me and so many other moms, just try this practice. Now that doesn't mean we're all still going to get triggered by emotions. That's going to happen. What I can promise you is if you practice this, the feeling, the emotion will last less and less and less. You'll be able to process it through, right? So I would love to hear from you. Would love you to just hit reply. Let me know how this is for you. And I hope I hear from you again. And um, I send these emails from time to time with quicker, shorter videos. So um, I also have a Facebook page if you want to join that and talk with other moms and uh, hope you do well and hope to see you soon. Take care.